Thank you so much, Dickin. Thank you, thank you for being here. Um, and um, I don't know if there's anything you want to ask or something, or do you just want to jump in? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll be quiet. Uh, right, right after we finish, I drive straight to my daughter's house and we're having a wonderful family gathering. My daughter has two great kids. It's hard to believe, but her son is 16. Her daughter, Eva, is uh, 12 now. So I'm also incredibly grateful that I stumbled across Sydney Banks, what, 33 years ago. Uh, it's, it's been a life changer, <laughs> a game changer. You know, I'd been a psychologist for 10 years and I got so impacted when I started hearing Sid talk about these principles. So, and then at, when I learned them, my daughter was about my granddaughter's age. She was 13 going on 14. And there were a couple of things I saw in my very first training that sort of brought me to my knees. Uh, when Sid Banks said with great conviction, we are connected to the energy of all life. And the very essence of that energy is wisdom. And every one of you is connected to that energy and that wisdom, that intelligence that knows how to create life and operate what's created. You have as much connection to that wisdom as everybody else. In a sense, he was saying, you're a wave on the ocean and you're as much ocean as any other wave. You just don't realize it. You just don't, you haven't realized the truth of that. Because you are connected to that wisdom, you have perfect well-being inside. Perfect well-being inside. Do you know in 10 years of being a psychologist, I had never heard a single person say that. No one in psychology was saying that, that every single human being already has perfect well-being inside. Nothing they need to do to develop it. It's fully developed. I'm <laughs> like saying the wave has to develop its oceanness. Not, no, the, the, the wave is, is already always. So Sid would say, you already have this. You already are this. There is no separation between you and the ocean. And his message was, look down. Stop looking out and comparing yourself to other waves, thinking you're a little wave compared to all the other big waves. Look down, look down, look within. Drop into this ocean, go deeper into your true self. It's a beautiful metaphor. And just hearing him say that, I started to cry. Because as a psychologist, I had been working extremely hard on myself for 10 years trying to develop my well-being. Because it had been damaged by things happening to me in my early life. That was my understanding. And to hear inside is perfect while being brought tears. Tears of relief, tears of gratitude, tears of awe and wonder.
And then he said, it's very simple. The only thing that covers up our well-being is when we get caught up in our own thinking, our own personal thinking, our own thoughts of limitation. Most of our thinking has some degree of judgment in it. Most of the thinking we do is not helpful and not necessary. We're innocently living in our computer and we've lost sight of our soul, our source, our oceanness. And that's why we suffer psychologically. Eckhart Tolle recently, I heard him say that 98% of the thinking we do is unnecessary. It's not helpful. It's not uplifting, not new and fresh, creative ideas. It's just things should be different. I should be different. Things should be better. Things are worse. Things are good. Things are bad. Judgments about ourselves and the world and other people. Comparisons. Thoughts that create insecurity. Thoughts that create dissatisfaction. Most of my thinking creates dissatisfaction. So I see how when people spend a lot of time in their thinking, they start feeling more and more dissatisfied about life. And it's innocent. It's innocent. So I'm so thankful that I found someone that could remind all of us of our true nature. Our true self is oceanus. <laughs> so very quickly, I started for the first time seeing myself recognizing that I was feeling anxious because I did a lot of thinking that created anxiety. Most people would call it worry. I didn't even know I was such a worrier because I thought I was just thinking about my life and about very important things to think about. But it made me anxious, tense, insecure. And for the first time in my life, I'd catch myself thinking and going, whoa, right now, right now, thinking about what I'm thinking about is making me anxious. Why would I keep thinking if it's just making me anxious? And for the first time, I started to let go of my thinking and go a little deeper than the surface the surface of my personal thinking, which always keeps us on the surface of life. And when I would let go of my worried thinking, for no reason I'd start feeling better. Because when that thinking goes away that creates that tension, stress, when that thinking goes away when we're not paying attention to it. We naturally start feeling better because that's our nature. And as time went on, I started hearing Sid say over and again, if you want to discover your true nature, there's only one way ever for anyone. Let go of everything you're thinking. Go beyond your intellect, 
just for a moment. Close your laptop just for a moment. You can come back to it. It's a beautiful tool, but you don't want to live in it. Just go beyond the words. Go beyond your thinking. Go beyond all concepts, all beliefs, all ideas. And just rest in this space. And that's where you'll find your well-being. That's where you'll find your well-being. That's where you'll find feelings that connect you to life in a positive way. That's where you find feeling beautiful feelings that are not conditional. They don't depend upon circumstance. You can be in a horrific circumstance and drop into this space and access these deeper feelings. Compassion, courage, peace, joy, love, kindness. And in those feelings, you will be guided through any challenges and difficulties without having to process, intellectualize, conceptualize. And it's already doing that, but we haven't realized it. That wisdom will guide you. Now, when I came home after my first week of training, learning the principles, I felt like I had fundamentally learned two things, right? Inside, I have perfect well-being that will guide me. And I'm living in my thinking all day long. And sometimes my thinking is helpful and sometimes it's not. And when it's not, it creates tension, stress, or upset. And if I'm aware of that and drop that thinking come back to the present moment. I won't live in that, those feelings. I'll just have them naturally. They'll flow through me. That's what's called being resilient. So my daughter was just turning 14 and I was trying to share this with her and there were no books, <laughs> there were no tapes, there were no training programs. <laughs> We're on our own. <laughs> We're just doing the best we could, right? And I certainly made every mistake you could make. But it didn't change what I knew. And I kept coming back to that. I can be free of thoughts that burden me. And I have access to well-being. I, I couldn't lose that. I couldn't shake it. I couldn't unlearn it. When you have insight into what's true, you can't unlearn it. You keep coming back to it. You can forget it. You can get caught in thought again, like I have over and again, like you will. Big deal. Because at some moment you wake up and you go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just thought. And within is everything I need to live a beautiful life. Hmm. So when my daughter was 16, after a couple years of pure experimentation, <laughs> yeah. In the very beginning, the experiment went so poorly that she and my son came to me and said, Dad, Nina said, Dad, Ben and I have been talking, and if you say one more word to us about thought or moods, we're going to run away. That's how bad the experiment went at first. So I had to live this rather than just push it on my kids. And then they saw me changing, and then, then they were curious. Then they wanted to know what I was learning. 
And then my daughter had a profound insight that changed her overnight. And everybody noticed, all of our friends. My wife, that was when she goes, oh man, there's something to this. For the first time, she got interested, really interested. My daughter got interested. Every day I'd come home from work, you'd say, Dad, what, what are you learning? What are you seeing? She became an avid student of the principles. My son learned not by talking to him, but by observing us live this understanding. So my son would say, Dad, you're not like other parents. You don't get upset with us. And if you do get upset, you just get quiet and get over it. And then you come have a good talk with us. When my daughter was 16, she was doing really well with this. My son too, because he was being so affected by the feeling in the house. People do, people get very affected if you're living in a calm, beautiful feeling. Most of the time, it has an impact on the people, everybody around you. So I told my daughter when she was 16, before you leave home next year, my deepest wish is that you only know two things, two. And if you learn these two things more and more deeply, going deeper into each of these two things, you'll have a great life. No matter what shit comes your way, no matter what adversity you face, no matter what problems come into your life, You'll have a good life. You're already catching on to the first one extremely well. You're starting to learn that thought is what creates our feelings so that when you feel upset, when you feel unhappy, when you feel dissatisfied, that, that feeling becomes friendly because it, it will wake you up to the fact that you're the thinker. Now you have a choice. Keep thinking or let it go. Free will. It's your choice. Once you see that it's your thinking, you have a choice. Do I keep thinking or do I let it go? And if you let it go, what happens is you'll be resilient. You'll get over upset quickly. And that happened to my daughter. She'd say, Dad, I can't stay upset longer than 10 minutes, even if I try. Why would I do that to myself? Why would I keep beating myself up with my thinking? I said, that's one thing, Nina, I want you to learn is, I want you to learn enough about thought that you can be resilient in the face of any experience. And that will serve you for the rest of your life. People who are resilient do well in life. So that's one thing. The second thing I want you to know, and it's really simple, that when your mind quiets down, you'll feel better and you'll know exactly what to do. You'll have all the common sense you need to deal with whatever is going on in front of you in your life. Those are the two main things I learned. It's all thought and deep within lies our wisdom and well-being. Those are the two things I wanted my kids to learn. And then pretty soon, those were the two things I wanted every client to learn. 
and now I'm working on global initiatives because these are the two things I want every human being on this planet to learn. <laughs> We're doing the best we can to spread the word. Best we can to spread the word. That's why I can't retire. I'm 74. I, I, I can't even imagine retiring. When I have a message, if you found the cure for cancer, wouldn't you be traveling around the world saying, I found it, I found it, here it is? Could you imagine saying, well, I don't think I want to share that story anymore? I know this understanding can enrich lives and it can even save lives. I can't tell you how many kids now um, coming across who have been having a horrific time during this pandemic time of being isolated from their friends. The number of kids who are becoming depressed or suicidal is going up. And I know this is the answer. I know it. Okay. Natasha says, go deeper. <laughs> this is what Natasha always says to me. Talk whatever you want. Just go deeper. Go deeper. I said... Okay, okay, what's that mean, go deeper? What, what, is the, what does that mean? Right? Because I know that I tried to go deeper for 10 years as a psychologist, and all that trying just created another level of stress. So what does that mean, go deeper, and why would we want to go deeper? Well, it's a metaphor. So if we come back to the ocean, going deeper is just realizing what's true. That's what going deeper really is, realizing what's true. So I've watched my daughter. She was 14 when she really started seeing this. She's 47 now. <laughs> and I've watched over the years, she's continued to learn more and more about those two things, just like I have, just like my clients have. I haven't had much... <laughs> I've only had two insights my whole life, but I keep having I keep having them in a way that it takes me deeper in my understanding of the two things. Sid Sid Banks had two fundamental life cha changing realizations. Every bit of my experiences thought was his first one, and but for my thinking, I have well being. That's his first insight. It's all thought. Oh my gosh, all my unhappiness and insecurity, it's not who I am. It's not caused by my past, it's just created in the moment by the thinking I'm doing. And he started, like the rest of us, dropping more and more and more of his thinking that was unnecessary or burdensome, that would weigh heavily on us. And then he had his enlightenment experience where he felt like he was drawn into this light. And he went way, way beyond his thinking, his ideas. Deeper, metaphorically, he went deeper. And you know what he discovered? Two things. Absolute silence. He said, did you have a near-death experience, Sid? And he said, no, I went all the way through that into nothingness, the very source. The very source of life. The ground of being, 
out of which everything arises. And it's all the same energy, whether in formless or form. But what he discovered was silence and then a feeling of love like he had never experienced before in his life. And even the word love can't even begin to do it justice. The feeling of being at one with all of life is the most beautiful feeling in the world. And he came back from that experience and he said, every single one of you can get a taste of this, that if, if and when you go beyond all of your thinking, all, not thinking about the principles, all of your thinking, you'll get a taste of what I did. There'll be a quiet inside. And there'll be, if you notice and become aware, there's a feeling. Okay, just for fun, since I learned this through experimentation. So Sid would say, I've been telling, here's a quote from <laughs> Sid, after years of trying to teach us who were trying so hard to figure it out, he said, honestly, it's so simple. It's the simplest thing in the world. How simple can it be when all you have to do is look inside go inside, drop inside, fall out of your thinking. How simple can that be? And that's it. But everybody in this world, literally everybody in this world, is one thought away from touching this space inside, from true realization or a realization. One thought. And that's what I said before, it's a state of no thought. No thought from the intellect. The intellect goes to sleep for a split second. He said, don't get greedy. I, I, for me, it was four seconds. <laughs> and it completely transformed my life. <laughs> if you get, he said, if you can take one little step beyond your precious thought system, just one, you'll touch a space and something beautiful must come into you. Okay, just for fun, humor me. Humor me, because he, he said, every talk, he'd say, you have to go beyond the words. And he said, I've been telling people this for years and years and years. Everybody gets all excited. Nobody does it. So I said, well, okay, I'm going to do it. Finally, finally, I just said, okay, I'm going to do it. Go beyond all the words. And I, for two years, experimented with, what does that mean? Go, go beyond the words, go beyond concepts. Am I ever beyond concepts? Can I see that tree without any concept? Can I see my wife without concepts? What does it mean? What? And I had to find out. The invitation is for all of us. Don't, Sid would say, don't take my word for anything. You find out. You find out. I'm trying to point you within. You see if you step into that space, if something doesn't happen for you. So here's my suggestion, because this is what he suggested to me for years and years before I heard it. Let go of everything you're thinking just for a moment. Everything. Pay no attention to it. Doesn't matter if you still have thoughts. You're not paying attention to a single thought. You're just metaphorically just resting fully present but not holding a single thought in mind. Just relax everything into presence. 
We do it every night when we go to sleep, so it's not a technique. It's a letting go. It's a surrender. It's a just for a moment disconnecting from our thinking, dropping into the space of presence. The presence that's always here under our thinking. Just relax into that. Now, just for a moment, be aware of that space within you that you're in. And without thinking, allow a word to arise out of that space that for you in this moment describes that space. Let a word come to mind. If, if you would be so kind to stay as close as you can to this space, but just sort of squint your eyes open a little and, and write in chat, if you would, if you could do it in English, the word that comes to mind. Love, peace, calmness. Sid says you're looking for a quiet mind. It's what everybody is looking for. They don't, they don't know it, but that's what everybody is looking for. Awareness, floating. Now, if you would, come back to that space, relax. This is the going deeper. Relax into that space of love, peace, calmness, whatever. Your word is a pointer, so let go of the word now and let it point you back deeper into that space. In a sense, enjoy that space. and allow another word to arise to describe that space. And if you could put that in chat, please. Freedom, aliveness, love. Vivid, infinite, power.
Yeah, wordless. Yeah, word indescribable. Yeah. One last time, please, one last time. Come back to that space within. Relax very deeply into that space. And, and this time just be aware of the quiet that's at the heart of that space and the feeling that's at the heart of that space without even needing to have words. Okay, if you can come back into the group. That's what's within you and everybody else. That's our true self. That silence and that feeling is what some people call life energy. Some people call it the spiritual dimension of life because it's formless. Some people call it God, the words aren't important, they can only be pointers toward something available within every human being. This is Sid's message to the world. Underneath all the thinking we get caught up in and begin to think is true and begin to think who we are is another dimension that's always here. 